Bingo and the Burblies by Steve Housen, illustrated by Gisela Bohorkes. Gold Band. Chapter One. Bingo lived in a village in the rainforest. Her family had lived there for four hundred of hundreds of years. Bingo loved to explore. Every day she discovered something new, like a shiny beetle with great black horns, or a blue frog lived under a leaf, or a bright red bird with a curly tail. When she told her grandfather, he knew the names of all the time, all of them. One day, Bing Bingo wandered further than usual. She found noisy diggers working among the trees. Bingo crept past them. She followed a mighty river through the forest until it dropped over a ledge and became a huge waterfall. Became Bingo climbed over the ledge. And down the slippery rocks, she noticed a deep cave behind the waterfall. She couldn't resist going inside. It was gloomy and wet. The roar of falling water filled the air. Then Bingo, then Bingo noticed another sound. A short of gurgling. Burbling noise. It was coming from above her head. Bingo peered into the darkness and gasped. Four small creatures were star staring back at her. They had brown, furry bodies, bright orange eyes, and long pink noses shaped like trumpets. Strangest of all, they had bare, pink hands and feet that were covered in sticky pads. There were two larger animals and two smaller ones. They held each other tight and burbled at Bingo. I think I'm going. I think, I, I think I'm going to call you Burblies," said Bingo. "Please don't be scared." She took a berry for, from her bag and held it out. The Burblies looked at it for a long time. Then the biggest Burbly shot out a long pink tongue and gobbled, gobbled up a top. Bingo giggled. Next day, Bingo went back to the cave. The Burblies had ate more of her, of her food. She was amazed to see them climbing up the slippery walls, using the pads on their fingers and toes. Bingo didn't tell anyone about the strange new creatures, not even her grandfather. Chapter Two. Every day, every day after that, Bingo walked past the noisy diggers to the waterfall. The Burblies soon rushed down to greet her. When she arrived, they sat on her shoulders. The baby Burblies fell, fell asleep in her arms. The mummy and daddy Burbly showed her how. They drank from the waterfall and using their long tongues. On her way to see the burblies, one morning, Bingo was pleased to find the diggers had gone by. The workers who drove the diggers had been busy. They had to. They had left behind a vast, si silent wall. It towered above the trees and cut. 
across the river. Bingo noticed that the river wasn't flowing so quickly anymore. That night, she told her grandfather about the wall. He said, "I, it was called a dam. It doesn't belong here." He said, "The people who built it want to block the river so they can use the water." Um. Over the next few days, the river got narrower, narrower, and narrower. The waterfall got. Smaller and smaller until it was just a trickle. The Burbleys cave started to dry out. Without the waterfall to protect the, them, the Burbleys were afraid. One one morning, Bingo found the Daddy Burbley sitting in a tree, making a loud booming call through the, his nose. It echoed across the forest. The mummy and two babies, baby burblies, were huddling on the floor at the back of the cave. Their fur and skin had dried out. The cave walls were too dry from them to climb. You're not safe here anymore," said Bingo. "I'll take, I'll take you home with me." Chapter Three. All the villagers crowded round to see the strange new creatures. Bingo built them a shelter down the stream where it was cool and damp. Bingo's friend Mingu made a cage. She wanted to keep a burly as a pet in her house. But Bingo said, "No, they need to be wet." The headman wanted to eat one for dinner, but Bingo said, "No, they are not for eating." So soon, news of the creatures spread through the jungle. People. From nearby villages came to see them. A man with a camera came. He took photos to put in the newspaper. After that, a group of people with pale skin and bright colored clothes, with pale skin and bright colored clothes, came to take. From photos, grandfather frowned at them from the doorway of his hut. A big round, a big round man offered lots of money for the burblies. He wanted to put them in a zoo, but Bingo said, "No, they belong in the jungle." A kid. A kind man in blue shirt came to see them. His friend filmed him on a big camera while the crouched next to the burblies and whispered. The kind man pat patted Bingo on the head and said, "Take good care of them." A sigh. Scientist came next. She asked Bingo lots of questions about the burblies. Grandfather spotted nearby and listened. The scientist tist prodded the burblies and took clippings of their fur. They don't like that," the, said Bingo. "They are very special creatures," said the scientist. "I need to do some tests." Tomorrow, I'll come back to take them away. Then you can help me find some more. They aren't any more," said Bingo. Chapter Four.
for. That night, Bingo couldn't sleep. She was worried about what would happen to the Burblies as she tossed and turned on her sleeping mat. She heard a tap, tap, tap outside. It was her grandfather. Bring the Burblies and follow me, said Bingo followed her grandfather out of the village and into the dark forest. The Burblies clung tightly around around her neck. It was pitch black among the trees, but Grandfather knew the way. The forest was full of strange sounds all around them. Frogs, bats, birds, and insects were calling to each other. Bingo and her grandfather climbed steadily up the mountain behind her village. When the sun came up, they were high above the clouds. They stopped to eat some berries and fruit for breakfast. Grandfather watched as Bingo fed, fed the burpees. Then they walked all day. They, they walked down into the next next valley and up the mountain on the other side, then down uh, and up again. All day, Grandfather told Bingo about the secret of the forest. He showed her plants that could cure sickness. He showed her a bird that looked like a branch. He showed her frogs that had sea through skin. They spent another night sleeping it in the forest. The next day they walked again. Chapter 5 On the third morning, Bingo and her grandfather scrambled down a steep rocky Sl slope into yet and another valley valley the trees in this valley were taller and greener than any they'd seen before rivers raced down the mountains on all the all sides just then bingo heard a distant booming noises the daddy burbly was who was dozing on her shoulders, sat up. The booming sound came again. The daddy burbly gave this own loud booming call and boom came back in reply. Bingo looked at her grandfather open mouthed. He smiled back at her. They walked down into the lush trees at curtain of creeping a lush trees. A curtain of creepers blocked their way. Grandfather pushed the creepers aside and led Bingo into the most beautiful valley she had ever seen. Waterfalls tumbled on all sides into a deep lake. There was a cool mist in the air and rainbows filled the sky. The trees were bur bursting with flowers and fruits and berries, but some of the fruits were moving. Bingo looked closely and re realized that they weren't fruits at all. They were burblies. Welcome to the village of a thousand rivers, said Granddad. My own grandfather bought me here a long time ago when I was about your young. He lifted his hands to his lips and gave a booing burbly call. 
Hundreds of burblies boomed back in reply. The four burblies on Bingo's shoulders joined in too. More burblies appeared from behind the waterfall falls. Bingo felt happy but sad at the same time. She grinned at her furry friends. "You're home now," she said. "I think you'll be same here." The Birdly family gave her a big, sticky hug. Then she held up her hands and let them climb into the nearest tree. Grandfather put his arm around Bingo's shoulder. "Let's keep this place our little secret, shall we?" he said. In this valley, all around them, Birdly's bur. Burbled happily, just as they had done for a hundred of years. V. End.